forge a cone thruster on, we first of all need to bend the stock the hard way before we bend it the easy way across the flat. The problem is knowing what degree of radius here to bend to. I solved this by a geometric progression, but you can equally do it by trigonometry. The first thing I'm going to do is divide a piece of rusty tin plate in half. I've got a 90 degree square and then something to extend that. My next issue is to put the stock on, or the type of stock that I'm going to be using, in this case two and three quarter wide. I'm going to trace two lines there, the four on the aft. So I end up with the two lines of the stock and then something perpendicular to that. What I'm going to do now is measure out half the radius that I require and draw a mark and then project those lines until I get a reference mark here and that is the centre of my radius to scribe for my pre-curved bend. This then is the start of my um, radius and I'm going to draw two lines, one from here and one from the back of the stock. I'm going to use a piece of string and a silver pencil but you could equally use a set of dividers or a compass. I'm going to put my thumb on the piece of string that uh, goes with the intersection and then I'm just going to scribe arcs. And you should end up with something that looks like that. That gives you the prescribed arc of the pre-bend before you rack up for the frustrum of cone or truncated cone, whichever you prefer. We know by watching how metal behaves when we bend it uh, that some of these corners will move if we bend this the hard way. Uh, this is shown best I think in the welding on the collar on the Rose 1 video on the YouTube site. So what I'm going to do first is knock in the top corners of the inside measurement to the top of the cone uh, about a quarter of an inch or so and then taper that back down to the outside corner and leave the outside corner untouched. That will be my first move. When I've got the heat I'll probably curve this end, turn it round, knock that end in and curve the end to complete finish and then check it against our drawing. I'm going to hold the stock at an angle across the anvil just purely with the benefit of the camera. Uh, typically I would do it across the anvil. Well, I've got the heat in this area, I'm going to bend this first part. I'm going to check this now against the drawing. We know that by making a ring the inside dimension has been compressed and therefore is thicker. The outside dimension has been stretched and is therefore is thinner. 
if I don't fit my drawing, let's say I've bent it too far, then I can come in and claim some of that excess thickness <clears throat> and spread the ring out and open it up. If, however, I haven't bent it enough, it's a simple procedure to come in here and just bend it a little further. Here is our initial drawing, and now we're going to check our piece against the drawing. And that's fairly good. I'd be okay if that were a little tighter or not as tight. That, that's within parameters for me. My next job is to dish the inside of this ring, or cone as it will be, um, and make it slightly convex. That way when I roll it up I won't have a concave face to the outer surface. So first of all dish it to make it convex and then when I roll it up it'll be flat instead of concave. My next move is to roll the actual cone. So with the convex, with the convex surface down on the anvil, I'm going to roll this um, into a cone, or a truncated cone, a frustrum cone. I'm actually going to swap these tongs out for a pair of hoop tongs, which have got a 90 degree turn, as that will help me in the process. I'm going to turn this around and attempt to do the other side with a different heat. I'm going to be frustrated getting the hammer in because of the top edge. I'll do what I can, then I'll move to the bick to finish it off. I'm going to move to the big and finish this off. Typically I would do it in this heat, but I need to move the camera, so I'm going to take a second heat. And I just need to close this up to make my comb. Here is the frustrum cone completed. I'm um, hoping that the outside edges will be somewhat straight. That's why we dished in the swage block first, otherwise they'd have been concave at this stage. I need this cone for truing up some passers I'm doing in a ring. Uh, and I need to actually split this and weld it to a plate. That's why I didn't weld the outside. <laughs> 